Hello, uh, welcome to the TEAS working group on our virtual or online IETF 109. Um, we have, uh, I'm Lou Berger, uh, Pavan Biram's online. I think we have Matt, I'm not sure if uh, Matt is here, but he's always uh, very helpful and uh, as our working group secretary. Uh, as usual, the material is online. You can also, if you click on the chat button, you should be able to see the links to that. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, and you'll also see the link to Code EMD, which is our um, collaborative minute taking. Yeah, please do go uh, join us there. There's only a few people there right now. Uh, please join us there. And if you hear comments uh, said during the session, please help. Uh, by capturing those, particularly if you also say comments. Let's see if I can turn flip slides. There we go. Um, this is a formal IETF meeting, which our note means our note well applies, and uh, everything we say and do here is governed by our process and become part of our permanent record. Obviously, we're using Meet Echo for this uh, meeting. If you're uh, uh, joining us today live, you're you're, you know that is that's how you joined. Um, we also are uh, uh, recording, and as usual, um, minutes, audio, and video will be published. And um, so again, everything you say here is part of that record. Uh, and again, please help with the minute taking. Um, as always seems to happen, we end up with a very packed agenda. Uh, no matter how much time we request, we always seem to fill it, uh, which is great. And it's nice to have an active working group. Um, this, the only thing that's changed since originally published is we reordered things a little bit. Um, so if you happen to look at the, the first uh, version of the agenda, you uh, may find yourself moved around uh, in time and in order. Um, we, there was a minor tweaking on time uh, just to fit all the requests. We do give preference, of course, to um, working group drafts and other um, chartered activities. Uh, we will continue to be working this way for a while, as everyone has seen, ITF 109 is, um, sorry, this is uh, <laughs> updated a bunch of different slides, uh, ITF 110. Um, is uh, going to be uh, online. So our next one is online. Uh, we're online now. We'll continue working this way for a while. Um, please use the list. And we have the online WebEx available um, for both informal meetings and uh, formal interims. All it takes is to, uh, to get one of those is to make a request to the chairs, and we will set you up uh, with it. For interims, um, you can also request an interim, although we, we uh, will initiate those as um, uh, we think necessary. As you saw, sometimes we initiate and they, they don't quite work out, um, as happened with our last interim. Um, but we, we want to uh, use these online uh, meetings between uh, IETFs to keep our process going so that even though we're not meeting in person, um, we keep the momentum going. Uh, our formal IPR process, which we do polls both at accept, working group acceptance and as part of our last call, um, hasn't changed. Um, uh, and but I think and I think everyone is familiar with it. But it's always good to to show this to remind newcomers. We're going to work, work through walk through the um, uh, active drafts in a moment. Uh, Pavan will do that. Um, in terms of where we are from the publication process, we have one uh, new uh, uh, RFC. This is actually quite a bit of work um, that was done to get us here, and it's a um, it, it's a, a a significant foundational document in uh, in our Yang work. Uh, this is about um, this allows us to represent TE topologies. In Yang, um, it's, it, it took quite a while to get there, and we really appreciate all who contributed to it and their hard work. Um, we have um, uh, we have one document um, that is with the IESG, 
Um, there was uh, uh, actually, but fun. I, I think you were going to talk about this on the uh, in the next slide deck, so I'll leave it for there. And um, we also have had one new adoption since the last meeting. We haven't received any liaisons. We have jointly sent one liaison, and it shows um, uh, what our recent drafts and RFCs, as well as working group changes. Um, it, it's available um, if you're looking online. Uh, you can click on that link. And with that, we're going to jump into uh, more detailed status on drafts and. Okay. Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Pawan Biram. I'm your other co chair. Uh, working group document status, uh, as you can see on the slide, is next on the agenda. We do have a very packed agenda, so I'll try and keep this as uh, terse as I can. Uh, can you go to the next slide, please? So we currently have 21 working group documents. Uh, they're all listed here. Uh, five of those, the ones that are marked in blue are on the agenda today. Uh, there is one draft, uh, the PC native IP draft that uh, Lou was referring to earlier uh, is currently under ISG processing. Uh, it's actually currently with our AD. Uh, there was a new revision published for this over the weekend uh, addressing uh, Deborah's comments. Um, there will be uh, further guidance on the proposed status of this document that would be provided in a few days time. Uh, so the guidance would be to uh, uh, change the proposed status to uh, informational. Uh, uh, so keep an eye out for uh, that email. Um, so that leaves us with 15 other documents. The status of each of them is covered in this deck. Uh, the modeling drafts for T, um, let's, let's stay on the, uh, let's stay on the, yeah, the modeling drafts for T and RSVP and L3 and SR topology augments are all nearing completion. Uh, they've all had a young doctor review done. Um, we also have uh, Tom Petch uh, diligently reviewing each of these, uh, thanks to him. Um, the authors have been making sure that each of his comments do get addressed. Uh, there's also this uh, new expectation, rather recommendation from the young doctors to add uh, a JSON instance of the young model in the appendix uh, of the draft in which the model is proposed. So the plan for most of these documents uh, is to address the last set of comments from Tom, add the JSON instance to the appendix, and then request working group last call. So in the meantime, it would be great if you could uh, get some more reviews and uh, feedback and on the uh, usability of these modules. There are a couple of young documents that are listed here as ready for young doctor review. Those are the ACT and VN Yang and the path computation young documents. Uh, we initiated the review process for both of these documents over the weekend. Uh, we also have three documents marked in red here, which are currently in expired state. Uh, the authors have promised to revive those uh, this week. Um, so before we move on to the next slide deck, there are a couple of uh, uh, topics that I would like to double click on. So let's jump to slide six. Yeah, so this is the SMP draft. Uh, there are a couple of open items for which the authors are seeking some inputs. They did start a couple of threads for this on the list. Uh, Adrian did chime in on one of them. Uh, I would encourage others to participate in those threads and uh, help the others close them. Um, let's go to slide seven. Uh, this is the document that discusses PC CC use cases. Um, a few meetings back, there was some debate on whether uh, they should just remain as a living document and not go through the publication process. Uh, we decided then to revisit the status of this document at a later point in time. Uh, we believe it is that time now. The authors have just requested to change the state of this document to adopt it for working group info only. Um, we would like to get some opinions in on this before we make the change. We understand there's been a fair bit of work uh, put in to get this document to the stage and uh, don't uh, really want to discourage folks from making similar contributions going forward. So if the authors and anybody who wants to chime in with their thoughts, uh, yeah, it would be great. 
Dhruv or any of the authors, would you like to say something? So uh, I think based on the past uh, comments, we uh, we thought that uh, because the ISG itself was not preferring too many use cases documents, especially when the extension work was almost ready, and uh, these uh, documents have done their job of uh, like you know convincing the working group and the ITF that this work is needed. So that was the understanding we were in. But we would respect whatever opinion that the chairs and the AD suggest. And if uh, there is a push to uh, publish, we would, of course, uh, be more happy to publish it because we have done the work. But uh, we are following the guidance that is given to us. So we are completely open to what you throw our way. OK, fair enough. Anybody else would like to chime in? So uh, Lou and I would uh, discuss this with ADA uh, and uh, make a call on it. Uh, we, we will share the outcome of that discussion on the list. Uh, I will stop here with respect to this deck. I'll let you go through the rest of the slides and also the reports that are sent to the list in leisure. Uh, please do send out an email on the list if you find anything missing. Uh, so any quick questions on the status of any working group, any working group document before we invite Drew to present the, star, the next presentation? I guess not. Uh, Thru, you're up. I will be presenting an update to three working group documents. They are all Yang model related to ACTN and VN. Next slide. So we have uh, nine uh, Yang models here. We have a VN Yang model, uh, augmenting of TE and VN for KPI telemetry and a bunch of service mapping model where a generic types model and then augmentation of various service models and network model. So let's go over an update of each of them. Uh, next slide. And maybe one more you can. Yes. So this is an introduction to what VN Yang is. This is the Yang model for VN operations. It is from the customer point of view. We uh, use heavily the abstract topology and uh, uh, and the connectivity matrix to uh, to represent the VN model, and uh, it is uh, it is a higher abstraction. It is from the customer's point of view, and this has been uh, sort of like getting ready for a while. We are, uh, as uh, Pavan earlier mentioned that we think that we are young doctor review ready, but I will quickly go over what are the recent set of changes that we have made. Next slide. So if you guys uh, remember, uh, in the last meeting, we presented an uh, and suggestion from Kenichi Ogaki from KDDI, where he would want wanted to make a change to the VN compute. We discussed that during the last meeting, and that change has been incorporated in the draft. So the, basically, the change allows the VN compute RPC to be a single RPC that can be used uh, to make a single call to get the result, uh, uh, the VN result in one call. As I mentioned earlier, since we were uh, dependent on T topology, uh, earlier this was a two call. So that uh, they wanted to simplify. And the way to simplify was pretty straightforward. We optionally included two groupings in the VN compute. These are the T types grouping for generic uh, path constraints and T types grouping for uh, generic path optimization. By reusing these two groupings in VN compute, we are able to now uh, get the results and pass all the information needed for VN computation in one RPC call. Uh, this has been done at the VN level as well as at the VN member level. So this is the main change that we have done. But uh, continuing, there were some more comments. That's uh, in the next slide. So those are our current uh, pending work. Uh, so the pending work is uh, there was a request uh, from Kenichi that if we can describe this uh, in uh, by a figure. So that has been asked. So we have a figure pending that we will add for VN compute. Uh, there are some editorial comments that are still pending from Tom Patch. I kind of missed them when I was updating. I realized it later. So when I was making these slides, so I will uh, uh, update on that. And as I uh, said earlier, that I think we are ready for uh, Yang Doctor review. So this uh, finishes the VN compute. If you have any questions, I think you can jump to the queue. I can answer right now or at the end of all the three presentations. Either way, it's good with me. Uh, but I'll continue to save some time. Uh, 
So the next update is the KPI telemetry YANG. We have uh, two YANG models here, which augments the T uh, model and the VN model. It adds the various PM uh, telemetry uh, characteristics as well as the scaling intent mechanism into uh, these two uh, model. This allows the customer to subscribe to, whether at the VN level or at the T tunnel level, uh, various uh, PM characteristics, as well as uh, we have a concept called automatic, uh, uh, autonomic scaling intent, which has been, uh, been there from the start. So the update in this document, next slide, is, uh, 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 is pretty basic. We had a change, added some uh, editorial cleanup of the Yang model. There were some references that were incorrect, so that got fixed. We ha had a comment that we should describe uh, how the VN level uh, performance metric is calculated. So uh, we have added that detail in the description uh, of how uh, at the VN level uh, these metrics uh, are computed, which is usually the max of the VN members. So that's the minimal change in this uh, document. The next, what we have is, uh, next slide. So next we have uh, the TE service mapping Yang. Uh, as I said, this uh, uh, there are a bunch of uh, augmentation in this model. I will just quickly describe what this model is in the next slide. So the role of this TE service mapping model is to create a mapping relationship between various service models that we have uh, in ITF, L3SM, L2SM, layer one, uh, CSM, as well as uh, we also allow the same grouping to be used for the network models as well. And we map these uh, service and network model to our T's Yang models at various levels, at the topology level, at the tunnel level, uh, or at the VN uh, level. So the main reason why we do this so that we could have a very seamless service operation that when uh, the customer is thinking in terms of L3SM and underlying there are TE tunnels involved. We have a, a mapping between how those services are being delivered uh, uh, using the un underlay TE resources. This allows us to do various monitoring, diagnostic, and various other things uh, to maintain this mapping. Next slide. So uh, what, what has been updated? As you know, L3NM and L2NM uh, were added in the last update, which we discussed in the working group. We added a thing called T mapping template. There was a support for SR policy that was added. So these were all the changes that we made uh, last time. And there were a comment on the mailing list, again from Kenichi, and we are very thankful for or to him to, co to come up with uh, new use cases as he's implementing this model. So one requirement that they had was they wanted to map one L3SM to actually multiple VN models. And they said uh, that they have a use case that uh, that is use, uh, uh, that is needed for this. And we discussed on the list, uh, it doesn't harm us uh, to have a mapping. I think the most usual case would be one is to one case. But if an operator wants to uh, further break it down into multiple VNs and maintain them separately for some reason, it doesn't harm from the Yang modeling point of view. So that's why this change has been made. And this was discussed on the list uh, in the past as well. Uh, apart from that, the changes were there were some errors in our X paths uh, that were pointed out to us, uh, which we have fixed. Uh, after posting this update, there was some more discussion, uh, which is on the next slide, where Kenichi uh, asked us to also handle QoS profile, which uh, I will uh, describe. So the, the what you see are the two uh, further augments that we discussed on the mailing list that uh, that needs to be added, which is uh, at the L3 VPN site level, they have uh, a QoS profile and they allow you to create a custom QoS profile and give uh, constraints, et cetera, right there at the site level. So there they wanted to maintain a mapping between uh, these custom QoS profile and the VN AP that is created by our uh, to uh, to service this uh, this custom QoS profile, so that one is to one mapping we are maintaining uh, maintaining it here. So we wanted to get more feedback uh, from people, especially who have implemented L3SM and have uh, feedback on this whether this augment makes sense and if.
needs to change, we will uh, we will make that change in the next slide. And that covers all the changes that we have made in the last uh, in these three Yang models. Uh, any comments? See, Oscar is in the. Oscar, go ahead. Oscar, go ahead. Oscar, you have to unmute. There is an unmute button on the top, the mic button. Uh, now, can you hear me now? Yeah, okay. Okay. I didn't press the that that one. Uh, so my, my question is, um, in the latest uh, I change do, that you uh, that was proposed, it was uh, an augment on L3SM uh, to map the QS. So would that also apply to L to L3NM? That uh, I, yeah, I think that's a very good uh, question. Uh, I I feel like you know that custom QS class if it is existing in the L3NM. Then of course it would. I have to check whether that's the case or not. And I think you can answer it right away. You would know whether you have something like custom QS profile in L3 and M as well. We we have all the the profiles because they apply also to the uh, they apply to both uh, service model and, and network model. The profiles yeah. apply to both. Yeah. So then I would definitely augment both. This is just an example for L3 SM. I'll make sure that that's applicable for every other place where it's needed. Okay, thank you. Someone else in here looks like they dropped. Uh, I saw Italo briefly. Uh, Italo, you still have a comment? There's Oscar. <laughs> okay, guess not. We can proceed. Thank you. Next up is Dan. Hi, Chairs. Um, I was actually going to present my screen remotely, if possible. I've just requested the screen. OK. Uh, can you hear me clearly? We can. Uh, yeah, I'm trying to grant yeah. it. Uh, doing it. Maybe I have to stop her. Uh, yeah. Yes. Okay. Let's see if this works. I'll be a guinea pig. Yeah, right. So. I actually appreciate cool. that. Better for us. Oh, you're very welcome. <laughs> okay. Uh, hi, guys. It's uh, it's morning here uh, in the UK. Uh, I'll be talking about uh, the applicability of ACTN to POI, packet optical integration. There is. Um, uh, two documents actually that uh, uh, attempted to uh, show the applicability of ACTN to POI and actually the document uh, that you see currently is the merger uh, of these efforts. That's why we, we do have quite an exhaustive list of sort of authors and contributors, you know, a good percentage actually of the T's working group. Um, so uh, what is the intention of the work? It's really to show uh, almost a cookbook of how you would take the functional architecture of ACTN, the various functional components, uh, the specific interfaces, and uh, what procedures and protocols, uh, specifically data models, you would use in order to set up and operate uh, packet over optical services. So this is um, really important, I think, um, work because it, it it highlights all of the the discussions that we're having with sort of the separate um, protocols and data models and how we will use those in order to sort of deploy these search services. And from an operator perspective, as well as a, a vendor perspective, it's important to know if these procedures and models are actually suitable and, and fit for purpose. We spend all this time actually developing uh, Yang models, but you know how efficient are they? And you know, what are the gaps uh, tends to be 
sort of uh, after we've deployed them in the field if there isn't sufficient um, interop or implementation early on in the development of the document itself. Um, so we we know actually that um, the focus of the work is going to be on the southbound interfaces. So it's predominantly between the multi-domain service coordinator and the underlying uh, controllers or managers. So the the physical, the packet physical, and the uh, the optical physical uh, network controller. And ideally, um, when we finish the work, we will have a fairly good uh, understanding of uh, what are the available models? You know, some are optional. You know, how are they used? Uh, were there specific implementation or um, technology gaps? Uh, are there operational management security issues that that were not identified uh, during the development of of some of these procedures and protocols? So, how about a reference architecture? Well, it, it's fairly. Um, Formulaic. Essentially, it's sort of four domains. Um, uh, so we have a, a hierarchy of our packet layer that sits on top of the optical layer, and then sort of uh, sort of horizontally, we've got uh, domain one uh, and domain two. Um, and these these interfaces in black uh, are between the uh, MDSE and then the packet and the optical uh, PNCs, uh, uh, respectively. And then we've got a further set of interfaces between um, the PNC and the optical uh, PNC to the actual layer, the sort of technology domain where the the actual sort of nodes uh, sit, and you know already um, there are uh, a number of generic and technology specific uh, models that we can use, uh, and we're seeing uh, a number of kind of not necessarily issues, but some sort of clarifications that that, that may be needed there, and I'll, I'll cover that a little bit later. Um, what isn't in scope, uh, of course, is above the MDSC, but it, it turns out actually that some of the operators uh, who are involved in the work are uh, very interested in sort of having that discussion, but for, for the time being, it's, it's kind of out of scope. So if you were to read the document in its current form, uh, we've, we, we've managed to do sort of the first uh, pass of merging the sort of prior uh, prior two documents that I highlighted earlier. So we currently have uh, two phases that we're working on, um, phases or scenarios, I suppose uh, you might call these, but it's, it's how we generate the, um, the view of the network. So our sort of physical network topology discovery and then existing service topology discovery, uh, how that information is carried between the various PNCs uh, to the MDSC. There are, are some sort of procedures, some aspects sort of operationally that that are kind of interesting to consider. And, and, and this includes things like the link discoveries and the attachment um, discovery. So some operators might see this discovery mechanism as being a, a Sort of security risk. You know, other operators may see it as something that would be nice to have. So whether it's static, whether there's some sort of automated uh, process, that that's kind of some of the discussion that we're having in the document currently. So I mentioned already that uh, we've identified the common Yang models. You know, so the the T um, uh, service and the topology Yang models, and then we've got our, our sort of technology specific extensions or augmentations uh, that we're using as well. And and this is essentially the the ingredients um, that we're using as part of our, our, our cookbook. There are of course um, some uh, service models um, that that we are considering as well uh, for some of the, the, the packet aspects. Um, or so, sorry, not serve service model, network model. So our L2NM and our L3NM uh, models there. And another aspect to consider here is the, um, is the, the ongoing discussion whether to use the, the, the uni topo versus client topo. So essentially, um, you know, what augments uh, RFC 8345 with the service attach, uh, attachment point abstraction discussion. And we know that that what we're sort of highlighting in our document is 
occurring as a parallel discussion in things like the ops area and, and actually sort of in, in, in other documents here in T's and also CCAMP. So there are some discussion points around um, around the implementation of, of uh, ACTN and, and POI that are, that are still ongoing. So clearly um, the work that we're doing is just kind of feeding into some of that parallel discussion. Uh, good. Um, so I think I just highlighted actually some of the chapters or sections uh, in our in our document. So if if you have read the document, you may have noticed there's actually quite a lot of text, um, and of clearly, you know, I'm sure the chairs and certainly the ISG would appreciate brevity or succinctness uh, with, with with this type of document. But I just want to kind of highlight actually that uh, because there are sort of so many options and, and various permutations, it's really important, I think, to document some of our assumptions. And maybe going forward, we can actually uh, prune you know, or distill um, some of this discussion text uh, to make it uh, sort of a little less bloaty in the document. But at least for the time being, we've just kind of captured um, all of the discussion and, and probably sort of spent too much effort uh, working on our assumptions and documenting those assumptions. So maybe going forward, we will definitely try to prune that text down. But some of the meat of the document here are, is contained within section four, because this is you know how we actually um, uh, solve some of these scenarios. So as I mentioned already, you know how we populate the topology uh, and current connectivity, and then how we establish uh, our, our sort of um, uh, optical and then packet services on top of that. So what are we currently uh, working on? Well, there are uh, numerous open issues. Uh, these are sort of tracked, you know, sort of the, uh, the current uh, trend seems to be to use uh, GitHub. And we will be mindful, of course, not to do all of our work via GitHub. Uh, what we will uh, sort of attempt to continue, and I hope we've achieved this so far, is to address some of the uh, sort of the issues, uh, the open uh, discussion points, for instance, you know, there may be you know, how we discover and populate uh, inventory um, in the MDSC from the PNCs. Um, what are the service attachment points that we're using versus sort of some of the discussion around um, uni and client and what's actually being exposed. You, these, these are discussions that can occur ideally on the T's working list. Um, um, mailing list, uh, but we will also be sort of discussing these during our almost weekly call that we actually have for uh, this particular piece of work. And then reporting some of the findings, some of the conclusions that we reach on these separate calls on the mailing list itself. Uh, some of the, the other sort of hot topics at the moment are around isolation. We know that sort of um, uh, you know, network slicing, uh, and and isolation, so sort of um, uh, providing circuits, providing uh, a bandwidth to you know particular customers or particular um, uh, topologies that are then represented in the MDSC is kind of a, a hot topic, and whether that's uh, a soft or hard isolation continues to be uh, an ongoing discussion. Uh, what 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 we haven't addressed in the document that that will be uh, in the next version are some of the some of the additional operational issues and Drew just kind of highlighted that with some of the telemetry discussion on the previous talk. So not only of course are we uh, providing network connectivity for sort of packet over optical services, but we almost certainly will want to uh, monitor that uh, connectivity. And in the event of some kind of degrade in service uh, and certainly um, loss of connectivity, it needs to be reported um, adequately um, and uh, appropriate action needs to be changed uh, or appropriate action needs to be taken and potential network changes uh, will incur. What, what isn't as sort of discussed in the document currently is, is, is things like sort of um, pre-computed path um, protection for either type of service. That seems to be just a, a step too far at this point. Thank you. I think those are um, all the slides I have. Okay, we have Joel in the queue. Uh, Joel, go ahead. I wasn't gonna raise this, but since you made a point of mentioning isolation, may I suggest you don't talk in terms of isolation? 
Did you talk in terms of observable service parameters, confidence of delivering observable service parameters, and at least until there is actual working group agreement on what the heck isolation means and how it's supposed to be related to anything else, just stay away from it. <laughs> Point taken, clearly understood. Thanks, Joel. That's a that's a great point. Anybody else? Guess what? Uh, thanks, Dan. Uh, Adrian, you're up next. Great. Just wait for that slide to show up. Uh, so this is uh, RFC three two seven two BIS. So three two seven two is the um, overview and discussion document for traffic engineering in the internet. And way back, we decided uh, that it would be helpful to update this old document. Uh, so we did um, a couple of revisions, and then it got adopted in July. Um, uh, and it has been silent since then. And in my opinion, silence is not particularly helpful. It is not indicative of work in progress. It's uh, really indicative of nobody having the energy. So um, since uh, I had uh, uh, volunteered, in inverted commas, to be the editor of the work, um, I updated uh, in uh, early July, just to capture a couple of points that were raised during the adoption poll, uh, in particular, um, whether the uh, components of traffic engineering all needed to be present for a system to be truly traffic engineering. And this is phrased in terms now of TE versus partial TE. Uh, since then, uh, I've embarked on uh, editorial polish, so going through the the text, which was, uh, I think, somewhat in uh, Daniel Aducci's uh, tone of voice, and uh, been polishing it a little bit. Um, the O2 came out at the start of the month, where I'd reached... Uh, 2.4.1. I've just posted 03 today, where I have reached uh, section 5.3, which is almost exactly halfway through the document. So I'll keep working on that. Um, and from here on, the choice of how we proceed is either uh, we get some input um, from the working group, anyone or everyone. And that's uh, edits or text suggestions or comments or complaints. There are seven sections needing technical overview material. They're all marked TBD, so they're very easy to find in the document. And they cover quick IGPTE, Alto, network slicing, deterministic networking, SDN, and intent-based networking. And if anybody wants to supply text for any of those sections, that would be most welcome. You might drop a note to the list just to say you're doing it so that nobody else um, works on the same section at the same time. So failing anybody else doing anything, my plan would be to complete the document by Christmas myself, either um, by um, carefully polishing or hitting it with a hammer, depending on uh, how short of time I am, and then uh, asking the chairs to get on and last call it uh, in the new year as early as possible, uh, because one way or the other, it's. I think it's clear that the working group will have finished whatever it thinks needs doing, and we need to get that review and, and be finished. That's it. Okay. Any comments? So I see someone typing in Comey MD a comment. It would be good if they uh, made the comment. <laughs> Jeff, go ahead. 
Hello? Yeah, Jeff, go ahead. Oh, you can also. Uh, I'll, I'll do the intent based networking part. Uh, lovely, thank you. I'll do it on a daily basis. So. Uh, which day? Every day. <laughs> <laughs> that's, your, that's your intent. Yep, I have great intentions. Uh, we have Drew and Boris next. Drew, go up. Go ahead. Working group. I think when we started all this work, our main intention was that we can point to this document when somebody outside the working group, maybe BRTE comes to mind and SR policy and SRTE discussion that we had. Uh, so should we also evangelize this work and say like, look, we have now a good reference being ready and see if outside the working group people can start using it. And that could also give us some inputs whether we have succeeded in our mission in clarifying what is TE in 2020. I think uh, I'm picking that from the bottom. Yes, if, if, um, if people are able to use it, it will give us a good idea that we've done a good job. Um, but um, before pushing it out, for other people um, with us saying this is the reference, I would like to hear more than just me saying this is um, this document captures our opinion. Um, and I, I'm not hearing that at the moment. Okay. Boris? Uh, hi. Adrian, so just as Jeff mentioned, I also would like to volunteer and help you with those additional uh, text pieces. That would be perfect. So please have a have a look at the document, um, grab a section and write some text. I'm only looking for each of these sections. I'm only looking for sort of three paragraphs. Otherwise, the document becomes unbalanced. So um, it shouldn't be big work. Okay. Got it. Okay. Thanks, Adrian. Thanks for driving this forward. Uh, uh, there is still a fair bit of work to be done. So if anyone is interested in contributing, uh, please do reach out to Adrian and see how you can help. Uh, we are now moving to that segment of the session for which most of you have been waiting for and are up at an odd hour. Uh, 75 minutes of network slicing topics coming up. So after the last IETF, uh, we did an adoption poll for a couple of documents that were um, produced by the design team. Uh, the calls failed, but it did generate a lot of uh, great discussion. Uh, it sort of resulted in a bit of a research, uh, reset in, with respect to the terminology. Uh, the authors have been focusing on addressing uh, the comments that were raised during the adoption poll, and uh, we will hear from them about it in a little bit. Uh, the discussion on the list uh, seems to suggest that we are converging on some controversial items. So uh, like everyone else, I'm also eager to see how this session progresses. So before we bring Yari in to give a brief update on the design team, um, Lou, do you have anything else to add? Uh, uh, we'll, we'll see how it goes today and figure out what the right next step is. Uh, so. Uh, Thanks for the intro and over to Yari. Okay, do you hear me okay? You can. Yeah, so if we can just move to the next slide. So my intent was not to speak at length, just sort of give a very high level status report and you know, way forward and uh, you know, where, where are we and where, where are we not? Um, so as, as Vishnu mentioned, we attempted to do a working group adoption in August or in the summer which didn't succeed, uh, but uh, I think there's reason to think that we, we can succeed and we are close. Uh, the issues during the summer were primarily around terminology, names in particular, and uh, isolation, a few other uh, topics. And uh, since then, a lot of work has happened, a lot of discussion has happened. Um, revisions have been made, uh, I believe, on the name issue of yeah, or calling these terms a particular uh, thing is uh, th th that's a salt issue. But uh, one would observe that once you move past some issue like this, like you don't like the name of, of a thing, 
it's only then that some people actually get to think more about the actual content or substance of, of things. So I think some of the discussion that we've seen recently is in that category that, okay, now we sort of put that thing past us, but let's now look at what, what the thing actually says. And so Adrian's drive for more accurate definitions is in this category, some of the discussion isolation, some discussion on scope and so forth. Uh, screen's changing. Okay, nice back. Um, I think my advice, at least for this, is that you know, we should find what, we, what, what is the commonly acceptable minimal set of things and move on. And the reason for that is really that, uh, I mean, there's a lot of things that we could do. Let's, let's agree on the, on the simple things. And, uh, and the, the concepts discussed here are actually important for other work and maybe not in terms of like actual reference to or you know, doc document dependency as such, but there's a lot of work that sort of you know enters the space one way or the other. And um, if we actually had some agreement about the terms, what are we even talking about? Then I think that would be beneficial to keep the keep the thing together. Um, and uh, so, for instance, anything that's discussed <laughs> in 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 this section of the agenda, like it's, it's uh, highly dependent on this. So. Um, and the final comment is that, uh, you know, the, we had a design team. Uh, the design team produced some results that were discussed by the working group. And we've intentionally wanted to move the discussion to the working group. Like, it's not that the design team has much, that much discussions. It's mostly practical, if, if anything. Um, so everything is really in the hands of the working group. And so, you know, we, we design team have no particular status. Um, the authors can propose stuff and they, they have and they you know, revise documents. Uh, thank you for that. But I think the agreement needs to be found in the working group uh, amongst all of us. So, so I think that's the setup for Kiran and others to start talking about the actual details or, and substance. So I think I'm done here unless people have high level comments at this point where I think we can move on. Any comments? No, we won't. Uh, Karen, you can go ahead. You All right. Oh. Thanks, Gary, for uh, providing the overview. And uh, let's get into the details of what we have been doing, specifically from the definitions draft perspective. And as you notice, the name of the draft has changed. And I'll just provide an update on behalf of all the authors. Next slide, please. Um, so an overview of the changes. So things you look at the left column they have been pretty stable, even if we have gone through um, different discussions in between two IETFs, uh, 108 and 109, and interim meeting. Um, our core definition hasn't changed. The way we describe the characteristics or structure and stakeholders, different sections, they haven't changed a whole lot in terms of the content. What we did bring change was related to the naming, of course, and then we improved some of the text related to SLI and SLOs because they are also the core part of the concept that we are bringing in with network slices. And uh, there was an action item to bring in some text for isolation. We also got a feedback that security considerations should not be left empty. So some text was provided there. And um, we also got some feedback to remove a lot of descriptive text from the document and probably make it a candidate for framework um, draft later on. Next slide, please. So in interim meeting, it was um, mentioned that uh, transport slice is, as a name, is not acceptable. It was um, non-starter. So we pulled the mailing list, came up with 14 suggestions, and it seems that IETF Network Slice was the name which was majorly selected. 
And if you want to see the pluses and minuses of all the names mentioned here, I have attached two slides at the bottom. So you can look at it later on. Next slide, please. And once we change the name, how things, um, how rest of the content changed into the document. Um, now we don't have transport slices. We specific, we very clearly define that we are talking about IETF scoped network. In our document, we qualify term IETF because there was a great amount of discussion that there are other parts in the network where you would use network slicing. So IETF network slice is not an end-to-end -end solution. So having some kind of a prefix or a qualifying term for IETF technologies was necessary. And the definition remains the same. Whatever we had as transport controller is now called IETF network slice controller. And accordingly, we have changed NSCs and NSREs as well. Next slide, please. And in terms of improvement, I got um, a lot of review comments, mainly from Adrian, where we kind of restructured the document, changed the nesting in the sense some sections were pulled out at the top level, and uh, that we also deleted a lot of stuff to make document more readable. And I mentioned earlier that now we have a better text for SLO, SLI, and it's easy to read also. It blends in with the rest of the sections much better. And uh, the, there was a general feedback that you should not be talking about too many details about realization of the slices in this um, definition struct. So we took a lot of section related to that and some of the use case description we had from the document. We also had, um, quite a lot of discussion on what vertical or horizontal slices mean. And we have taken that out for now and hopefully framework document will find some space for that kind of explanation. But right now we just describe the concepts that how you would extend the slices using um, hierarchical or sequential mechanisms. It's very brief right now. Next slide. And so one of the major discussion was on isolation text. And um, the, the way we brought in the text is by explaining what we mean by isolation. And the key point here we want to highlight is that from a consumer perspective, there should be no negative impact on that customer slice whenever there are changes in other parts of the network. And then we have added text to describe it in certain ways. And um, another thing we want to highlight here is that customers should be able to ask for isolation explicitly. Yes, it is possible that in some cases, there are certain SLOs that will uh, satisfy isolation requirement. But in other cases, a customer may have explicit requirement because they feel the need that, OK, I. I feel that this thing will not negatively impact me. So I would explicitly ask for that. So we decided to keep that text there. And I just described why it should be SLO or not. So we are not going to get into that debate. And uh, there was a discussion that we should just keep a, pla a placeholder and not provide any text before workgroup adoption. But we felt that providing some text that we can refine going forward is much better than just leaving it blank. Next slide. And we still have um, a couple of review comments. One is related to uh, improve the security section further to describe it in a uh, slightly better manner. And we are working on it. Um, there was one comment from Med on the mailing list that from his perspective, the document still looks like connectivity centric. And he needs to provide us some more comments where he thinks that uh, something is missing and what is that thing that he would like to get added into the document. Next slide. 
So this is where we are. I personally think that we could go ahead with the work group adoption, adoption. Mainly the reason is that a lot of people have contributed here. And yes, we are still discussing a couple of items, but by and large document has remained stable from last six months. Of course, readability, readability has improved a lot as we kept refining things. And so the open issues are um, rather incremental and uh, hopefully we can converge on them. So that was my last slide. Thank you. Thank you. Ketan, I really wish you hadn't put in text on the isolation, because I would really like to be able to adopt the document. But the text you have put in doesn't work. It isn't a definition. It instead introduces ambiguity that maybe there's something here, maybe there isn't. We had agreed to leave placeholder in. I was comfortable with having a section that said, this is a topic that's under discussion and we could do it later. But the text you put in doesn't work for me. And if, we, if there's an adoption call with the text as it is, given how misleading it is, I would have to object to the adoption. So that is. Um, so, what is the criteria for work group adoption? We can still continue to improve the document after that. I mean, we need some starting te text, don't we? No, we don't need. We don't need starting text on isolation. The agreement was not that you were going to provide starting text. The agreement was we we're going to leave a placeholder in. But yes, what will be this is not done. Allow me to finish, Katan. The working group can improve the document, but at the same token, though I am not as a working group member obliged to adopt text that I think is actually wrong. And in this case, I think the text you have put in is wrong. And that's an obstacle to, to adoption. Places where it needs refinement, I, of course there's places that need refinement. That doesn't bother me. But when it's wrong and misleading and actively misleading as far as I'm concerned, there's a problem. OK, so I have seen your replies on the mailing list also. I understand where you're saying things are wrong. But I haven't seen your definition of isolation. How would you like to express it? Because I don't we can need for a definition of isolation. I don't believe the term is needed. I'm willing to leave a placeholder so that people can propose text for discussion. but. I do not believe there is any need for the term. Therefore, I am not going to propose a definition. OK. I wonder if anyone thinks they're talking because it's quite quiet. That's what I was thinking. I was wondering if my internet was working. Stuart, is it your internet? Wow, that explains a lot. <laughs> Same uh, yeah, situation. Global media call outage according to the message. So but apparently things work now. I can see not, I cannot see anything. all of you <laughs> welcome back again uh, seems like everybody got disconnected uh, so can you guys hear me can someone acknowledge i can hear you yes Paul. 
Okay. Give me one minute. Yeah, I had some issue. Can you hear me? Uh, yeah, Hello? yeah. I think the the whole session dropped. I mean, uh, it dropped for everyone. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, okay. Okay. I thought it's only me. No, no. We can hear you, Reza. Okay. Perfect. Thank. You. Okay, the joy appears to be that there was a uh, a Miteco uh, VM reboot. Okay. Yeah, we are. Yeah, that's the thing in the middle of the meeting. So. Uh, I think we were in the middle of a discussion <laughs> with between Joel and uh, Kieran. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see if we give people a minute. I think we're about at the same head count we were before. Lou, is it possible that you could unshare your screen? Is it, there's, there's just a black screen there that's oh. taking up half of the share space. Interesting. Uh, I don't see an issue. Now all I see is the black screen. I'm republishing. Yes, so we have both the black screen and the new screen. How I don't, elegant of me, Deco. I don't now see we've got the half screen. I would say click reload, but I'm a little worried that you might not get back in. <laughs> Yeah, and in particular, right now, I don't need to see the screen for the conversation we were having. Oh, right. So uh, let me kick it off with a question to you, Joel. Uh, yes. Is, uh, what I think I heard you say is that no definition of isolation would be acceptable to you. That's not no, what you said, I, said, I think that's what I heard you not, really say. I don't, well... I do not believe there is a definition of isolation that is useful, but I am perfectly willing to allow for discussion and proposal, but the definition that has been proposed is not useful, and I don't know of a useful definition, so I can't very well propose one. I mean, Ketan said, so Joel, why haven't you proposed a definition? And the answer is, because I don't think it's a useful concept to the task. Okay. Um, I, I think we can note that and um, move to the next a, person, my, unless you have another problem, point you'd like my, to make. My problem with the text as it is, is I consider it seriously misleading on the topic. That's why I was perfectly willing to, to the agreement you that you two chairs said, we'll just put in a placeholder and we'll discuss separately what a definition might be. Okay. Uh, have you expressed how you think it's flawed? On the I list? believe so. Okay. I, Sharon, do you think I, you believe you understand have, that? But I th Did we, is Kieran back? Uh, I didn't see her. Uh, we have to wait a moment then. Ah, here we go. Do you hear me now? Yes. Welcome back. Yeah, sorry, I didn't realize I was on mute. So yes, we have started some discussion. And uh, what we got was initially scratch text from people who are already in the queue to ans answer that. One feedback is we are going to strip down a lot of information which is related to realization and have a minimal text so that there is a way to express isolation from a customer perspective. That's what I'm looking for right now. 
and we can have further discussions on the email list and that is why this text is here is there in the draft so that we can iteratively revise it so that everybody agrees to it and one thing we are clearly saying that we are not make, taking a stance that isolation is always related to slo and it can be met by all the slos you could have additional parameters that or some an additional characteristic which could come from um, regulatory perspective or it could come from security side of things or the perception of the customer who wants to deploy that slice so we just want to provide a mechanism to express that characteristic I think, it'd be really good to, I, I think it'd be really good to take this discussion more uh, and follow it up on the list uh, Joel, if it's okay, we have, a, we have a bunch of people in the queue and we got a little delayed because of the need echo. I think it'd be good to give them an, uh, an opportunity to speak as well, if that's okay. Fair. Okay, thanks. Uh, Stuart, you're up. Um, well, I, I want to start by making a, making a fundamental objection to the position that uh, Joel was taking. It is not his working group. It is not his right to object on behalf of the working group. It is the working group to take a decision, and he may or may not be in the rough. And I think that's a position that the chairs should take. Um, as to uh, isolation, I find it a useful concept. Um, and found it a useful concept in the uh, days when we were working on uh, VPN Plus because it, 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 to my mind, it does describe um, the concept of uh, two services operating um, in different universes. Now, we can work on text, but I, I don't. I'm not sure why this, why one objection by one person to one section should stop a draft progressing. I think that's directed at the chairs. I have not uh, heard it stopping progressing. I've heard a, an individual's objection, and uh, you know, it's it's duly noted and will continue to be discussed on the list. But it's as you say, it's just one individual's objection. Uh, I yep. think Yari. Oh. Yeah. Um, this is a difficult topic, and, and you know this is the reason why I, I said that it's important to, for us to agree on the pits that we we do agree and move on. And uh, actually, um, we had a really good process on this name issue. Like we had people propose alternatives. That, you know, you have an issue with what we had. Here's some alternatives that you know and pros and cons, and let's discuss that and and make a decision. We didn't quite follow the same process in, in this other discussion. Um, so it's more of like, you know, this is the this is text and, you know, let's edit it if it needed or take away or not take away. And, and so, so we didn't really do this, you know, top down thing that, hey, we could do A, B or C or D here. And I, I think that was a mistake. <laughs> Uh, we'll, the discussion would have been easier if, if we had done that. And, and maybe there's still time to do that, perhaps. But um, yeah, um, so it, it, it should be noted that like lots of people do have differing opinions on, on this um, aspect. Uh, I, I do too, by the way. I, I think the current text is somewhat misleading. There's been some discussion on the list, actually. If, if you follow this, uh, like Adrian posted a suggestion of a you know, fairly drastic cut down of the text. Um, um, Joel has said that he doesn't like to mention it at all, um, and, and so on. Um, I actually agreed personally with Adrian's proposal. For me, not, not, not like nailing down the things that we need to, we need to do, I think. For me, what's important here is that we do mention these concepts because it, it, it is talked about um, in the industry. Um, but we need to relate it to our concepts, and and it, it, it we can't have the situation where we have like this concepts like you know you have reserved bandwidth and then wink wink you don't actually have reserved bandwidth. But if you have this other property, then you have reserved band bandwidth. But wink wink it doesn't actually work if you you know a, a node goes down. And then you must have a third concept of uh, fault tolerance of some sort. 
So, you know, th there are some issues there. And I, I, I think we would do the industry a service if we actually sort of try to relate the industry terms to what, what we are speaking about. And I think that would be totally fine because we still are talking about isolation then in the document. And uh, we're not overselling it. We're not confusing anything. We are relating that, you know, this, this aspect can be represented by those things that we have elsewhere in the document. And, and then we move on. And a final comment is that like, I, I think part of the objective that Joel had was that, you know, whose default goes into the document. Like we have several opinions about this stuff. Obviously, the working group decides, all of us together. Um, but, um, but I understand his position that like, he doesn't want to start fr from you know, somebody else's definition. If he, he would like to have his definition, perhaps, or start from a bl blank sheet of paper where everybody is on the same um, uh, position, kind of. Um, so I, you know, if it was me, I would either start with empty section placeholder or Adrian's definition. I, I, I'd be happy with Adrian's definition <laughs> also. That's all I had. Thank you. OK, so uh, uh, Jeff, you're up. And I'd like to cut the line, if possible, because we are well over on the slot. Sure. So since I yeah, people in queue, just be clear, people in I queue brought this term a number of times to discuss with Joel, I actually stopped doing it because my impression is no definition will do anything. I, as long as it's empty, I'm OK. You put something that I'm unhappy. So I mean, it shouldn't be like this. Uh, the definition I proposed, they come from my experience, personal experience. While it's not observable, it's definitely something a, and customers should be able to request. I've seen this in my life. It's definitely business and working agreement. So I believe it should be there. Whether it's under definition or whatever we already have in the draft, we can find the text as long as we want to come with the text and some definition, not to oppose to anything. So that's my position. G. G. Jimmy. I just want to. Can you hear me? Yeah. Go ahead. Okay. I just want to say that um, actually, because network slice, the network slicing is uh, not uh, only defining ITF and uh, for the whole industry. Isolation is described in almost all the number slicing related documents. And also in ITF's history, it has been mentioned in, in the VPN related requirements, frameworks, and solutions. So, my opinion is clarifying the meaning of isolation in the ITF's context and its relationship with the, the other number slicing related uh, activity would be really useful. And we have been working hard to separate the requirement from the implementation of the isolation. And uh, I think many people give very good comments and suggestions. And I hope we could work together to uh, polish it uh, rather than just uh, say, no, we don't need it. Yeah, that's my opinion. Thank you, Greg. Then uh, the current document reflects uh, their agreement of the design team or of the, uh, those who are listed as authors on this document. I'm not sure what question you're really asking. In the end, we have to agree um, as a working group what the term is. So it's sort of, you know, whoever contributed to it doesn't have special standing. Um, we have to reach consensus as a working group. So it's, you know, that's that's a, a starting because, point. Go ahead. Because to my understanding is that there is no agreement uh, within the design team whether isolation is something that observable or not. So I think that there is that's um, since there is no agreement, then uh, why to have something which is questionable present to the working group for adoption? 
um, it's more logical is take it out, work it on, and when it's ready, then working group can add it to the document. Because the working group, when working group adopts a document, it's a working group document, and the working group decides uh, their changes to the document. So if there is no clear understanding of what isolation for the net, uh, network slice is, then just work on it as a separate work item. Thank you. Uh, Dave? Thanks, Luke. I'll the line was cut after Dave. OK. Um, yeah, I, my comments are more along the lines of what Greg just stated. Um, I, I think there there are differences of opinion. I don't think it was asserted that it was just Joel that had this opinion. I don't think that's correct. Um, it seems like something this controversial to the group being put in and then asked for working group adoption is a little premature. It would be better to leave the placeholder in the document, have a reasonable discussion about the definition, and then if there's agreement, add text. Um, I, I, at this point, with the text in there, I would be against working group adoption. I mean, we have to start with what we agree with, not with what we don't agree with. Thank you. All right. Uh, thank you very much. Um, clearly, there's more work to be done on this before we move to adoption. Uh, uh, yeah, Kieran and the authors have said that they will uh, continue to discuss it on a, on the list. I think that's a, a good next step. Um, uh, I'll, uh, Pavan and I will talk um, between ourselves as well as with Yari of whether or not it makes sense to have um, uh, informal or a formal interim on just this, this piece. Uh, clearly, um, it's really important that we have agreement on what it is we're doing, and fundamentally, that's what we're doing with definitions. Um, and we do need to reach working group consensus on what it is we're doing. It's not uh, you know, one 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 person or one set of people don't uh, uh, dictate to the rest of the working group its consensus, and it, clearly, we don't have it yet on uh, at least the isolation term. Uh, and it sounds like there's some good energy to uh, help move us forward. And uh, we'd like to see where that leads us. And again, we'll, um, we'll talk with Yari about uh, what the next step is on an informal or formal meeting. Uh, Pavan, anything you want to add? It, that's one quick thing. Yes. Hello? Good. Yeah, but, so that's one option. But, but you did have another option that you would go forward with, you know, let's agree that we disagree and have a placeholder and have that discussion after adoption. I think the document might actually be adoptable if you did that. Well, given that there's an active discussion going on, it might be good to see if we can reach any you know, conclusions with that active dis discussion. And um, I was trying to leave room for that. Uh, clearly, if in a few weeks we don't have any good resolutions, we can talk about where to go next. Um, and I agree that just putting in a placeholder is a viable option. Pavan, you were going to add something? No, I agree to that. I mean, we, we are at a stage where we need to make a call. Um, so I think given that the discussion is happening and uh, a few proposals have been made, uh, let's uh, yeah, let's discuss that. I mean, I, I'm not taking the placeholders thing totally out of the equation yet, but yeah, I mean, let's uh, discuss it uh, over the next uh, week or so and see if there's a need for another interim. Okay, I think we are about 25 minutes uh, late, running late by 25 minutes. Um, we can, if there isn't anything else on this topic, we can jump to Reza's presentation. Yes, let's uh, wait for the slides. Uh, the topic of uh, this uh, presentation is application of uh, IETF network slicing uh, in 5G. 
on behalf of uh, my co-authors, I'm going to present this one. Next slide, please. Let's try to do it in five minutes, if that's okay. Very good. The first the draft uh, of this presentation, uh, this uh, was presented uh, at uh, ITF 105. Uh, uh, now the main uh, changes that happened to the um, uh, draft is to be aligned with the uh, definition of the ITF network slice, exactly how it fits in uh, 5G all the terminology, everything that has been done in NSDT is reflected here. And uh, the content of uh, this draft is uh, it's shown here, how IETF network slides related to 5G, how they are related, uh, and uh, everything related to the northbound interface and details of the IETF network slicing is uh, well described uh, in, the, in the draft. Next slide. As you've seen here, and it is, is basically taking from the definition draft, network slicing as a concept is related not only to 5G, but other use cases. In this draft, specifically, we are going to talk about 5G network slicing, how it relates, and we try to uh, address everything that happened on the uh, NSDT, uh, how it relates to 5G. If you go to the next slide, it's trying to, the next two slides trying to just give a context visually how that relates to 5G. The, for the end-to-end -end network slice as a whole, as you see here, from the left to the right, we have started from the UE user equipment all the way to the RAN domain, to transport domain, and the core domain. How various uh, area or various domain related to end-to-end -end network slice clearly shown here that end-to-end -end network slice as a whole has component in the RAM, transport, or core. The portion which is related to our work is the yellow one that is related to IETF network slice. This is important to note that this picture, as it's, uh, and it's applicable to other use cases as well, that the network slice is not end-to-end -end network slice. You know, this is important to understand that why we call it IETF network slice related uh, to the end-to-end -end context. It's important to consider this picture when we go through uh, the rest that when we talk about IETF network slice, is not the end-to-end -end context. And it is very important, and the picture is clearly show that this is only one component of end-to-end -end context. Next slide. This, uh, to see the same problem from the different angle, as you uh, seen here, starting from bottom up of this picture, I have different networks. I have RAN network, I have various transport networks, and I have a core network. Whatever transport network provides is providing the connectivity between various components. And in a specific, in 5G, I try to show the component that needed to be connected because the whole idea of IETF network slice definition starts from the connection with a specific SLA slash SLO. In the 5G in a specific, the connectivity that we do, we do connectivity inside the RAN network. We are doing the connectivity between RAN network and core network and potentially in the core network. These are various transfer slices or sorry, IETF network slices, which well described in the document. Why we need that depends on the, your RAN deployment. There are various changes or various uh, IETF uh, uh, network slices will be introduced. And uh, it's, uh, uh, I also refer to the definition draft and picture that we the, the use uh, the, in the context of 5G. Next slide, please. I have two more slides. The so the definition uh, draft uh, um, uh, in this case, this is a summary of the work. We will define the uh, ITF network slice use case in the 5G, and in a specific, the NBI that we need uh, 
we discussed that, that there are uh, potential some augmentation needed to be done in the NBI the, the draft. There is some information model. We are still working on that one. But this is the main topic of uh, this draft. And last uh, slide, uh, we are seeking for uh, feedback comments. We mm, continuously aligned this draft with NSDT work and everything that uh, is happening uh, in the in a specific in the area of the the NBI that we need uh, and uh, the proposed uh, the, the draft uh, and the, mm, enhancement will be presented in the uh, next ITF. There are two questions. Uh, uh, please go ahead. Good, Shusong. Shusong. Right. Document and uh, about the section three for 5G and to end splicing. I think uh, the work is related to IETF. It is primarily the splitting, maybe slicing requirements and the mapping, uh, mapping transport slice to other slices uh, from different domains. So I think maybe this part of work could consider to combine with uh, the existing work in T's working group. I think maybe you have also read our document about the 5G end-to-end that was like mapping. I think it can be combined. And uh, what do you think? Uh, I will take a look. Let's have that one on the mailing list. Sure, if there are some synergy between those documents, for sure we can do that. Mm -hmm. Sure. Um, my, my yeah, send Shusan, uh, okay, if, yeah, if, please send that uh, reference on the list and yeah, and Reza can and discuss it with Reza. I think we should sure. move on to the next comment. Jimmy? Okay. Jimmy? G? Yes, can you hear me now? Uh, I would have to cut the line after G, sorry. Oh. G, G, go ahead, you go ahead. Uh, uh, can you can hear me now? Gets yeah, go ahead. Yeah, yeah. I see this draft uh, mentioned several topics like uh, the use cases uh, in 5G network slice and the relationship between the ITF slice and the 5G entrance slice. Also, it mentioned some uh, data models like uh, for the not bound interface. <laughs> so I'm asking which topic would be the most uh, uh, important for this draft and uh, some of this other part may be uh, relatively overlapped with some work in the design team and also the northbound interface model. And as she also mentioned, uh, the end to end slice mapping a draft. Maybe my suggestion would be maybe this one can focus on the use cases and for the other part can coordinate with other documents in the working group. If I understand your question correctly, so this document for the first two items that you mentioned, they, they are not overlapping, but rather try to extend the abstract definition that we have for IETF network slice in the 5G. So northbound included definition on that. And for the last item, as I mentioned, if there is synergy, we can combine it. So I know that we don't have time to go through more detail, but uh, if there are uh, other uh, comments, please uh, uh, put it in the main list and we can uh, cover accordingly. Okay, thank, thank you. Thank you. Uh, Louis? Can you hear me? Yeah, we can. Perfect. Okay, um, if, hello everyone. If you can keep it to five minutes, that would be great, Louis. So next slide, please. Okay, so the, the, the motivation of, the, of this work, of this document, is, is, is basically um, to, to consider the, uh, or I, I'm not sure if this is the proper, sorry. This is for the use cases, right? Not for the... Okay. Luke, can you shift to the other presentation? Or if you can do it in a different order, then... The title was wrong, I think, but uh, this is, I think this is the, the proper presentation. So the, this is one the one about uh, use cases. Yeah. So the um, yeah, essentially uh, here 
is that uh, we, we don't have yet a, a clear view of what could be the potential use cases in uh, that the consuming, let's say the ITF network slices. So uh, the, the intention uh, of this document was essentially go through the different uh, potential use cases and start uh, and, and try to get from them uh, different attributes, different procedures in order to understand what could be the behavior of the uh, expected the behavior of, uh, of the node bound interface. So next slide, please. So we will go quickly through different use cases already identified in this document. The first one will be about 5G services. It's uh, related with uh, what the Teresa was presenting before. So the objective will be essentially to support and to end network slices as defined for 5G systems, um, essentially in 3GPP. And uh, regarding any uh, node power interface attributes, uh, we could consider as a low such uh, downlink uplink throughput or slice QoS parameters, for instance, and plus uh, additional characteristics such uh, group communication support, support of uh, non-IP traffic, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Regarding procedures, we could consider here where the procedures defined in 3GPP for a slice slice cycle, uh, for instance, instance, instance allocation, slice instance allocation, the allocation, modification, status, uh, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Regarding applicability of the uh, network slice in this context, essentially would be for the N3, N9, and N6 interfaces in order to support the different slice uh, types defined in 3GPP, enhanced mobile broadband, ultra reliable low latency, and so on and so far. Uh, taking as uh, references, uh, the GSMA is gener generic slice template and the CGPP spec on uh, control and management of slices. Next slide, please. An additional use case would be uh, the NSB based services. So the objective here would be the support of connectivity between uh, virtual network functions that are uh, instantiated in uh, remote uh, NBI points of presence. Regarding any MBI attributes that could be identified would be SLOs, such incoming and outgoing bandwidth, QoS metrics, etc., and additional characteristics such as directionality, direct, sorry, directionality protection scheme, uh, and so on and so far. Regarding MBI procedures uh, would be all related to the life cycle, capacity, fault, and perform, performance management of these multi-site connectivity services as defined by HCNB. The applicability clearly would be the, uh, the communication in, between these uh, remote NFI POPs in order to support the, the different SLOs that could be requested by, by this connectivity. The reference here are the, a couple of specs from HCNFB, the IFA32 uh, and the SOL17, which specify the, the respective behavior for these uh, communications. Next slide, please. The last documented use case would be the one of run sharing. Here, the objective would be the provision of connectivity between cell sites and interconnection points uh, between operators for um, essentially for delivering the traffic from the this share uh, uh, radio cell sites. Regarding MBI attributes that could be expected would be uh, for sure SLOs such uh, maximum and guaranteed bit rate, bounded latency, packet loss rate, etc., and additional characteristics such as secure connection, IP addressing, and, and so. Respect to the MPI procedures that could be expected for the use case would be provision of connectivity services, collection of performance and fault data, et cetera, et cetera. The applicability uh, of the ITF network slice in this context would be the multi-tenancy of mobile uh, front hole, mid hole, and back hole. And the reference, this is not, not normative, but is the descriptive is the uh, Metro Ethernet Forum web paper on front hole, back hole sharing. Next slide, please. So the, this is the final one. The next steps uh, would be to complete the draft with new use cases. We have uh, in mind to uh, describe evolution of wholesale services and cloud computing based services. Uh, regarding the document, uh, after that, the idea would be to elicit common SLOs, attributes and procedures for all the cases in such a way that we could document in, in a, an additional chapter within the, the draft and uh, with respect to the group. So the idea here would be the idea of the presentation to collect feedback and comments from the working group to check if this uh, work could be a progress as part of the work in the uh, network slicing design team and for sure to prepare a new version for, for next meeting. And, and this is all from my side. Okay, any comments? We don't we don't have anybody on the queue, so yeah, you can go to your next presentation. Okay, thank you. So this presentation is uh, about um, uh, the, 
the idea of how is structuring the ITF uh, network slice controller and also how to, to place the different models uh, regarding to this structure. So next slide, please. So regarding the problem to, to be addressed, uh, that the impacts on how the the, the potential structure in terms of components of the network slice controller is to understand that there will be two essential procedures to be performed by the uh, network slice controller. Essentially, the mapping of the uh, ITF network slice requests as, as coming from the from the customer, and then the realization of those those slices. Regarding the data models, we could consider two different views. The customer view, which is uh, focused on the individual ITF network slice request per customer, and the provider view that essentially consider all the slices being provisioned, being realized in the network. So the, the, these two different views are complementary and necessary for uh, uh, making it work. So the goal of the document is essentially to, to identify uh, the major uh, network slice controller components and how the associated data models apply to, to, to these components or to the interfaces, interfaces between components. Next slide, please. So uh, zooming in, in into the um, uh, high level structure of uh, uh, that is reflected in the network slice definition document, we could take this ITF network slice controller entity and try to, uh, to um, uh, let's say, uh, divide in, in some major components. <clears throat> Sorry. So uh, regarding the structure, we identify these two major components, the mapper, that would be the, the, the component uh, in charge of processing the customer request and putting it in, into the con context of the overall ITF network slices in the network. And the realizer that would be essentially the one that process the, the complete view of all the slices and uh, decides the proper technologies for realizing the ITF network slice uh, below uh, in the ITF technologies uh, used for that. And regarding the models, you can see in the in the picture in the middle three different uh, interfaces uh, that are labeled as A, B, and C. So um, it, the first try of mapping the models to the, these interfaces, uh, we un understand and we would see that the customer view is covered by the uh, WDT's ITF network slice MBI Yang model. The the interface label as B will be the provider view that um, could be accomplished by the Liu. This transport network slice giant model, and the the models in C would be essentially the ones that are uh, used for uh, going ag against uh, all the network controllers uh, below, and would be out of the scope of this document. Next slide, please. So the next step would be to solve some open points that are signal as to do uh, items into into the document. Uh, we have identified two so far. So one would be the breakdown of NS mapper and NS realizer as, as these these major components that we do foresee. The second one to this uh, would be to discuss the complementarity of the aforementioned uh, models for satisfying type one and type two services as per ACTN uh, RFC. So the the point here is that uh, we need to discuss uh, to what extent uh, the uh, model li label as B could also accomplish on customer request uh, as customer slice request. Then to collect feedback and comments from the working group for sure to propose the draft as an as agreed as an as sorry as a great outcome of the TS uh, network slide uh, design team. Uh, by the way, the, the, all the co-authors of this document are uh, co-authors of the two proposed models, so there is, there is a consensus on, on that. And then to prepare a new version for next meeting. And, and that's all from my side. We have Adrian in the queue. Uh, Adrian? Yeah, thanks. Uh, thanks, Luis, for uh, this document. I think it's useful to pull um, things together the way you've done. Uh, can I ask you, beg you to go and look at RSC 8309, which is the Ops Area Working Group um, view um, of how uh, Yang models are composed to provide a top to bottom uh, delivery of a, a service and maybe map to that or use some of that terminology to be consistent uh, with what the ITF has already done. For sure. Uh, I, I, we will proceed in that way. Thank you, Adrian. Thanks. I'll drop that to the list. Thank you. Okay. Uh, Boris, can you keep it short? Yeah. Okay. So I will try. Luis, very short question. Could you mention what network controller could be optional? 
because in some cases network NSC uh, will be more than enough uh, to provision it. So network controller could be uh, like optional in, in, in several cases, in my opinion. So uh, you, you refer to the, the ones at the bottom, right? Totally the bottom. The one. We, we essentially took yeah, the, yes. yeah, the, the high level architecture that uh, was in definitions. The, maybe this is something that we could also address. So maybe, maybe we can add a discussion topic, I think. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Okay. Bo, you're up next. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Can you hear me? Yeah. Uh, I'm here to present uh, for the ITF network slice, uh, no bound interface, young model. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, Luis just mentioned that uh, there could be multiple uh, net ITF network slice related model uh, to be like uh, implemented in, in for different uh, for different networks like controller. And this draft is, uh, the goal of this draft is to define a noise bound interface Young model. And uh, since <clears throat> the, the terminology has been changed for the, for, for the network slice, so this draft has been changed so you can notice the name has changed uh, because uh, we, we have been dis proposed for discussion in, in the working group and also a uh, network slice design team for several times. So, and this YAM model is quite consistent uh, with the uh, IETF network slice definition draft. So this is the reason why we changed the name. And, and we also, uh, Received some comment about uh, how our uh, how this MBI model to work with uh, the relationship with other uh, young model. So here's we give the uh, some explanation about things. Uh, IETF has uh, classified uh, young modules into different categories and. Like uh, there could be service model and network model and also the device model. So the NBI, the this IETF network slice NBI model falls into the category of service model. Uh, also, Luis mentioned this is from the consumer view, and this model maybe uh, will work together with other uh, layers model to integ to be integrated together to fulfillment uh, the. IETF next slide service and network management automation. So next slide, please. Uh, chair? Uh, yes, okay. Uh, uh, based on the, the discussion of IETF network slice definition, uh, MBI YAM model should uh, fill the the requirements that uh, this model should uh, work not only for the configuration, but also for the monitoring. So when modeling this model, we think uh, uh, the young model should fill uh, these requirements. And uh, this young model like uh, borrow uh, the definition from IETF net Work slice definition draft, uh, like the IETF, uh, the, the left hand side is a view from the slice definition draft. Uh, it's a view from uh, a much higher level, and there could be uh, a one IETF network slice. Uh, they will be uh, related uh, to different NSE, that's network slice endpoints. So in our modeling, uh, we also use this uh, uh, terminology and we uh, expand it to, to more details. So I just give some uh, high level design uh, consideration about uh, the network slice connection group because uh, some of our uh, authors think there could be uh, use cases that uh, in one IETF network slice could be multiple different 
uh, SLO requirements for different network slice uh, members. Members means that uh, uh, a pair of network slice endpoints connections. So we uh, created this new uh, concept in, in the modeling. And also uh, we think uh, we need to create a network slice member uh, concept to to for the for the monetary uh, modeling so here that's uh, the modeling thinking and can we and, skip to next steps i'm sorry we're really tight yeah on yes yeah yeah okay uh then we finish this part and uh our consideration is we would like to uh seek more uh comments from the working group and and more input for the designing, uh, modeling designing. So that's all for the these slides. Thank you. Thank you. Ron? You're, you're muted. Ron, good. There is a unmute button at the top, the mic symbol. And can you hear us? Uh, Ren, if you would mind just typing in Jabber when you think you have it working, and we will go to Tariq. And Tariq, just because of the time, if you can do uh, your first one in five minutes. Can you hear me? Yes. Yeah. Yep, great. Thank you. Uh, hi, and uh, my name is Tariq. I'm one of the authors, and the topic is... Uh, Realizing network slices slices in IP MPLS networks. Uh, next slide, please. Next slide. Can you hear me? Oh, okay. So a quick uh, overview of the agenda. Uh, I'll uh, cruise over the introduction uh, with whatever time I can uh, crunch in. Uh, I want to talk about the slice per hop definition and how it facilitates the creation of the slice and uh, um, see if I can pro uh, go over the multiple approaches to network slicing that we have in the draft and then I'll close off with, with the next steps. Next slide, please. So the solution we adopt is uh, based on the diff serve principles for network slicing, the network resources, the shared network resources, and uh, to ensure the proper pl placement of the of the path uh, and uh, getting the traffic treatment for uh, for slice traffic uh, when it's traversing the uh, shared network resources. Um, uh, the solution we're proposing is agnostic to the path control technique used to set up the path. Uh, in the slice domain, be it SR, RZP, or others, it it, uh, um, it it takes into account that slices will have to be created uh, dynamically and changed, uh, managed dynamically, um, and on demand. Um, and um, yeah, we 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 have consideration for uh, different types of traffic carried over the same slice, and for that we rely on the diff serve class selector field. Uh, in the different data plane uh, uh, technologies. Next slide, please. So there are three approaches to uh, uh, the solution that uh, um, to, to realize network slicing. One is a control plane only uh, slicing of the network resources. The second is a data plane only slicing of the network resources. And the third is the uh, combination of uh, control plane and data plane slicing of the resources. Um, uh, in, in, in our solution, we, uh, as I mentioned, we, we, we introduced this uh, slice per hop definition. Uh, uh, this definition encompasses a data plane size selector, a, um, a set of uh, parameters for the 
data plane resources, uh, a QS profile, the per hop behaviors uh, of, uh, um, uh, related to the slice, as well, it, uh, it encompasses a set of control plane resources associated with the slice with respect to reservable bandwidth uh, priorities um, uh, of reservation uh, in the control plane and any uh, shared resource groups that um, you know, this slice is willing to share uh, resources with. And the last piece of uh, information that the slice per hop definition uh, will contain is a reference to a topology that uh, defines the links and nodes that this slice, uh, um, uh, that belongs to this slice. Um, there are multiple ways that to disseminate this uh, slice per hop definition that we looked into. One of them is, uh, is a suitable netcom for gRPC uh, interface once we have laid down the, uh, uh, the data model. Uh, the other approach is disseminating this or exchanging this in a routing protocol like IGP or BGP. And the last uh, is the manual configuration of the, of the definition. Next slide, please. Uh, we are on slide four. Uh, um, I'm sorry, I can't hear you. Uh, can you wrap up? We have some time for yeah. Indeed. Okay. So the, the slice per hop definition I mentioned that contains the slice uh, data plane slice selector. It's a, it's a field that is carried in the packets. There are multiple variations for this. Uh, I'll leave you to go over the op multiple options and where uh, one uh, is more suitable for different uh, use cases or deployments. Uh, we mentioned that there uh, is a uh, QS profile associated with a slice. Uh, can we move on to the next slide, please? And as well, the control plane resource management, uh, the different uh, parameters associated with it. And lastly, the topology uh, that defines the links and nodes associated with the slice. Um, so these are the pieces. Um, there are three slides and, and uh, subsequent slides here that uh, define different approaches to network slicing. The first one is the data plane only slicing. Um, and in, in that one, there's no network state maintained in the control plane. The second one uh, is the control plane only slicing of the network resources. And in here, we have um, the resources in the control plane being sliced uh, without consideration uh, or without the data plane being um, knowledgeable about slices. Uh, and the last one, um, the last one is the combination of the two of the of the previous two. We think that the last one will give us the strict guarantees that we're looking for. Uh, at least we're trying to standardize in IETF. Um, unfortunately, I don't. I didn't. I don't have much time. But okay. So for in terms of next steps, um, we are going to um, coordinate with a number of drafts that are already. Uh, uh, out there uh, with respect to protocol extensions uh, for slice um, aware traffic engineering. Uh, we do request the working group to review the document and give us feedback, and we appreciate that. Um, I don't know how much time do I have. I have another set of slides that describe the slice. Well, we, we have I'm sorry, yeah, you know, with the disruption and then also the good conversation we had on the, you know, the hyper potential topic where we're out of time, I'm sorry. Uh, no Ren, are you available? Uh, you were going to try a different account. Ran, are you out there? Hi. Hello. Yes. I'm oh, sorry. Yes. Hi. Five minutes, please. Yes. Yeah. I'm Zan from ZTE. Okay, I will quickly. Uh, I will do the presentation with the packet network selection using segment uh, route next, please. Yeah, 
A unified administrative instance identifier AI is used to distinguish different virtual network resources for both intradomain and interdomain network selected scenario. Now let's look at the AI from the following six items. The first is AI is the identifier of the dedicated virtual network for the slice. The second is it supports the end-to-end -end slicing. And the third is identifier the unified ASI across a uh, multi-domain of transport network. The fourth is AI is one of the constraint uh, criteria of the color template, and the color template, template with AI provide a more flexible control. The fifth is the uniform color template uh, for all overlay uh, service mapping to analyze results. The sixth is uh, it's AI meet the link uh, requi uh, requirements from 3GPP. It is independent of the existing uh, domain uh, partitions of the network, and it is also the, uh, uh, independent of the existing underlay frame and all uh, routing technologies. Uh, there is no modification to the forwarding tables except close uh, policy per slice. Next, please. There, there is an example of our solutions. In figure, there are two tablets, uh, red and blue. The red tablets include node H1234E and link between H1, 1213134 and 4E. The, the blue tablets include node H1234E and link between H3, 3431122342 and 2E. Let's see the process of creating the uh, TN uh, slice. The first, select the AI to the slice, and the second, allocate resources to the AI. The third is AI information is advertised uh, through control play. The, control, uh, the controller connects the resource information with AI through uh, BDPLIs. Then the controller can build the corresponding SR virtual topology and can calculate different paths according to the color with AI information in each uh, which will network uh, next please uh, next next please Yes, uh, AI as a set of TN slice resources identifiers. Our solutions support soft and hard solutions uh, for L3 interface slice of solutions uh, in IGP domain. Each numbered or unnumbered L3 link could be configured with AI information and synchronized among IGP neighbors. The IGP link state database will contain L3 links with AI information to support uh, T pass computations, uh, take account uh, take account of AI criteria. Uh, each L3 link could be configured to belong to a single AI or multiple AIs. For L2 interface slice as a listen, uh, each L2 member link of a L3 uh, parent link suggested to be configured to belong to a single AI. And different L2 members link will have different single AI configuration with different agency state. L2 member could be any type uh, interface, such as Internet, VLAN uh, interface, Flexi channels, T pass computations based on link state uh, database. Okay, need. <laughs> oh, so sorry, next, next, please. Next slide. Yes, this is uh, a multiple domain deployment. It is easy to provide end-to-end -end virtual network, including the inter-domain. In some deployment, operator adopt the BGPLU for set up, set up the BGPLU LSP. Uh, the only service will directly over the BGPLU LSP. If the only service have the requirement of the TE, which defined is the color, the BGPLU will also support the color. The BGPLU labels will allocate it uh, per color, the below is option B in the domain. It can also provide end to end virtual network, including the inter domain link. The inter domain link can also choose the link based on the color with the AI. Next, please. Uh, it's the end-to-end -end SRT with SDN. The BGPLS will uh, be used to inform the topology information contained 
the AI to the controller, controller. the controller can calculate the SR path based on the information for the interdomain link. BGPLS can advertise the direct protocol type of firstly put in the domain interconnections to IGP instance, then always import the import the date from IGP protocol source. Next, please. Uh, the, uh, yes, this is combined with SR flex algorithm. Uh, there are two scenarios. For interdomain case, STN controller can create VN for AI is AI based on AI and VN for FA AI, AI based on F, uh, FA respectively. SDN controller computers end to end segment list. Each contains multiple AIs and based on different topologies. However, for distinguished uh, uh, model mode and uh, border uh, border node, AI with uh, endogenous IGP metric delay T metric. Okay, Can you... sorry. Uh, yes, next, please. Yes, this draft uh, also will retest resist some standard AI values to re represent different types of AI, uh, like norm normal, uh, URLLC, and the TE. Next, please. And for the, the, the endogenous of select type EMBB, MIOT, we Two X will be uh, to be defined and will be defined in future. Yes, next please. Comments, welcome. Uh, thanks. Okay. Luz, uh, yeah, can you? Uh... Introduce your draft in a minute or two. And... Yeah, can, can you go directly to slide three? I, I will do on top of that. Slide number three here, the scenario. So yeah, um, basically in the, in, the, in this draft, what we are trying to to address is the situation that uh, now operators are starting starting to deploy computing facilities. There is a wide deployment of different sizes, and a different number of resources. So the idea will be to to have a joint topological view of both the working and computing resources available. Such a way that we could um, take better decisions, and decisions taking into account also the, the the compute domain, not only the network domain but the compute domain. So somehow this is similar approach that, as the one following the uh, drive uh, ITFT service function aware topology model. So it's, it's even it's, it's a, an original piece of work of that draft that has uh, taken. Uh, its proper life. So uh, in the picture the scenario, uh, essentially, you can see there the different data center pops uh, with different uh, resources. And the idea would be to incorporate the description of those resources into, into a model, augmenting the, the TE model. Uh, these resources could be raw resources, CPU, memory storage, or uh, being described in terms of quotas or, or bundles. Uh, and uh, we drop here there uh, an example like in the CNTT. So essentially, uh, what we expect is to adapt the model to different ways of exposing data center capabilities, work on, on the YAM modules accompanying such model, and, and for sure to receive any feedback or comment that uh, could come from the working group on this. And that's all from my side. Thanks, Luz. Uh, thank you very much for uh, do the quick summary. Um, apologize about the interruption in the middle, which uh, squeezed an already tight meeting uh, closer. Uh, please stay tuned to the list, participate in the list discussion, and look. Uh, there's we have uh, look for uh, both the formal and informal meetings that happen regularly. We remind everyone that the informal meetings are open to all, uh, and your contribution is most welcome. Uh, thank you all so much in participating in this active meeting, and we look forward to um, resolving some of the open discussions and moving forward with uh, uh, adoption with uh, uh, the, the design team uh, documents once we seem to have some better agreement on the terminology. Uh, again, thank you all, and really appreciate the contribution and hard work. Uh, Pavan? Thanks, everyone. Yeah. We'll see you soon.